and the anchor is all bent up. That's because it's a Danforth. This is too big of a boat for this type of anchor. This is your Bruce or Claw anchor. This also has 75 feet of chain with 600 feet of rope so that whenever you pull on this anchor, it's gonna pull from here, which is just gonna pull it right out. But whenever you actually throw it, you wanna tie off a rope right here. So that's what this looks like when it's all done. I got four uni knots on a lot of these really big commercial trollers. This is the type of anchor that you see. It's called a four fjord. This is a delta or a winged anchor, which is one of the most popular types for boats between 20 and 50 feet. Call anchor, just thrown into a little crate here. Here is another CQR anchor. One thing I've been noticing is on most of these claw anchors, they're not actually securing the safety chain all the way to the front. So if this thing gets stuck, it's gonna be stuck. Not very smart. This anchor here is a Danforth or a Fluke anchor. Looks like it's a 22 inch. This is a relatively low cost galvanized steel. And on this boat, it's connected to 75 feet of anchor chain. But the captain of this boat will tell you, this is a terrible anchor for this big of a boat. This is a 28 foot boat. That thing kind of flies all around whenever you're dropping it and it doesn't hook that well. So he's had quite a few problems with it hooking. These anchors are typically good for vessels under 20 feet in length that are relatively lightweight. Otherwise you're much better off using a Bruce CQR or Delta style anchor. All right, this is a huge, probably a 34 or maybe even a 38 foot cold water boat. And the anchor is all bent up. That's because it's a Danforth. This is too big of a boat for this type of anchor. Here's another small Boston Weller. And this guy has his rigged up with a fluke or a Danforth anchor. Just in a little towed up front here. Let's take a look at what we got here. In this particular case, I got a Danforth anchor. They just have thrown in a little basket here. That's probably an A3 anchor ball. Here's another small skiff. And again, you're starting to see a lot of flukes or Danforths on these small boats. Definitely the most common for a small boat. This is a nice setup of a Danforth on a small boat. Hooks it up and he just ties it to that line right there. And he's ready to drop it whenever he needs to. Cool little boat. All right, here's actually one of the first aluminum Danforths that I've seen. Really lightweight. I wouldn't really recommend getting an aluminum one. I think you're a lot better off with galvanized steel, heavier anchor, but this must work. All right, this is probably the largest Danforth anchor I've ever seen. It's huge. It's like it's made out of three quarter inch steel plates. Pretty cool. Take back everything about it I ever said about a Danforth. You can see this is hooked up to a huge windlass, giant chain, and that's what is needed on these big commercial trollers. Here's another captain who's also not happy with his Danforth anchor. You can see that it's all bent up. So this is how he has to put away his anchor. Not how it's supposed to be. This is also a 600 foot of rope, 75 foot chain. And then his anchor ball is an A3. In this case, it's a white anchor ball. This is pretty much the exact setup I have on my boat, except for I lucked out and have a Bruce or a Claw anchor. Let's go check that out. All right, so this is your Bruce or Claw anchor. This also has 75 feet of chain with 600 feet of rope. And I went with an orange anchor ball. And this size on this anchor ball is also an A3. The nice thing about having a Bruce anchor 
is this breakaway system. So as you can see right now, it is broken so that whenever you pull on this anchor, it's gonna pull from here, which is just gonna pull it right out. But whenever you actually throw it, you wanna tie off a rope right here so that in most cases, it'll pull from here and it'll hold. But actually in most cases, whenever I drop it, the breakaway system breaks away whenever I pull my anchor. So what happens if it's stuck too much, that pulls out and then you just pull from there and your anchor comes right out. And I haven't had an issue all year with the stuck anchor. This has worked very well, but a lot of times I do have to come in here and retie this, which is better than the alternative. I have tried tying it really, really tight so that it'll never break. And that day my anchor ball didn't come up. So I would much rather have this thing break than not break in my experience. This is also just a galvanized steel anchor. You can see that it is rusting a little bit. I do try and rinse it off, but along with the chain, the chain's rusting a little bit. Connectors are rusting a little bit, but all in all, this is an awesome setup. I've been very happy with it. All right, so I am gonna show you guys two different ways to tie this together. The first way is you just do three wraps around this, this rope that I'm using, this is 150 pound Ganyan. It's solid braided nylon rope, but in reality, any type of Ganyan you have should work. So we got three wraps, one, two, three. After you have three wraps, all you do is about 10 overhand knots. One, two, nine, 10 just like that that's what that looks like and then you'll just cut those off three or four wraps and that's actually stronger than four uni knots which is what I'm going to show you next this is actually how most people do it it almost seems like it would come unraveled but I've tried it and this is actually how most of the people do it up here and it works pretty good and once you cut it that's what it looks like perfect this will hold this would actually last multiple drops. This would probably last six or seven drops before it actually comes un, comes broken. The next way I'm gonna show you, it usually lasts one or two drops. So let's check that out. All right, this is how I typically secure the anchor. I actually just make four uni knots. So I do four four loop uni knots. So that's one, two, three, four loops on my uni knot. And I'm just gonna pull this tight. And that might actually be enough to hold it right there with just one. I've used two before, and I know that that works. But I typically do four loops now. That's sort of what I found the, the best spot to be, right on the verge of breaking and not breaking without having to pull your boat too much when it pops. Three, four. So there's my second one. Now we'll do that again. Another uni knot. One, two, three, four loop uni. And I'll just do one more and I'll be all done. Two, three, four. So that's what this looks like when it's all done. I got four uni knots. Most of the time this breaks with four. I would say about 50% of the time it'll break in just one pull, but I'm usually in pretty hard stuff. One time I made six uni knots and I was like, oh, that's gonna hold, and it did hold but it held too well and for some reason my anchor ball didn't come up and it actually made it a huge pain so I like using four uni knots this is my preferred way to secure my Bruce anchor one thing I've been noticing is on most of these claw anchors they're not actually securing the safety chain all the way to the front so if this thing gets stuck 
it's gonna be stuck. Not very smart. This is a small Boston Whaler, and you can see his anchor type is actually a Bruce, also called a claw. He just has it rigged up up front. Not sure the size, but it's not very big. This is an 18 foot aluminum boat, powered with a 90 horse. And the anchor selection here is a Bruce, and it weighs 11 pounds. This is a really small anchor, but it's all you need. All right, so here's a whole fleet of lodge boats and their anchors. They have a 33 pound claw made by Lamar. And you see they properly secure it so that it will come out if it's stuck. You can tell they actually anchor a lot. The anchor ball size is A3, but this one in particular is gigantic. As they get a little older, they stretch, and as you fill them up, even though it's a size A3, it's much bigger than an actual A3. Same with that one there. And lastly, again, you can see that this is a 33 pound claw anchor and they properly have it tied off so that if it does get stuck, it will pull from the front here. This boat here has a call anchor, just thrown into a little crate here. Let's see if I can get a better shot of that. He's got a big A4 anchor ball, 75 foot of chain, and the claw anchor. This claw anchor is 33 pounds or 15 kilograms. The claw anchor. I'm guessing this chain's one inch chain, but I'm not sure. It's got a GPS antenna and a Furuno radar. This is the Sea Roamer out of Sitka. He's got a Bruce anchor. Also called a claw, 66 pounds, 30 kilograms. The big windlass. That's a nice setup. This is a large boat, approximately 40 feet, and it has a Bruce or a claw anchor. It's called a Sea Hook by Sea Dog. The weight of this anchor is 30 kilograms, and it has a large windlass up front. Here's a large commercial trawler, and its anchor type is a Bruce or a Claw anchor. Yep, so this is connected to a giant windlass. This is a Delta or a winged anchor, which is one of the most popular types for boats between 20 and 50 feet. This one is connected to a windlass. One thing I noticed that they don't have a chain running up to the safety. So if their anchor is stuck, it is stuck. They actually should run a chain all the way up there and then just tie it off on that spot. But it's a cool anchor, it looks nice. It's galvanized steel. I think it says it's 35 pounds. And this is probably a uh, 38, 40 foot sailboat. Here's a big CQR anchor, made in Scotland. Looks like it's galvanized steel, hooked up to a really big chain. And you can see it's got the pivot point on it. And this is on a really large sailboat. Here's another CQR anchor on a large sailboat. You can see it's got the pivot joint right there. And this is on a windlass. A 
All right, on a lot of these really big commercial trollers, this is the type of anchor that you see. It's called a four fjord, F-O-R-F-J-O-R-D. Four fjord safety. Steel anchor patent applied for. It's actually custom built in Seattle. I think the guy's not making it, but now the daughter's running the business. That's what I was told. This anchor here is another four fjord, 125 pounds. On a very large commercial troller. All right guys, I'm gonna show you how we drop our anchor here. We got our anchor ball. Throw it under the side. Get this chain unhooked. What we do is we'll hold on to this and we'll let all the chain. about 400 feet of water. Here's my dad and my mom. And we're going halibut fishing. And I'll show you how we pull it later, pull it back up. But we're letting all the rope go through this ring. We have 600 foot of rope and 75 foot of chain. We gotta get our day shape up so this troller doesn't hit us. Also, if I was using two hands, I would have slowed it down a little bit as it fell so the chain doesn't get wrapped up. So now it definitely hit the bottom. We don't need a ton of scope out because we have 75 foot of chain. So that'll actually be good. I'll take this. Whenever you anchor up, you gotta fly a day shape. So we just put a balloon on these reels. If you guys enjoyed that video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to my channel. If you click the notification bell, you'll get notifications whenever I upload a new video. Thanks for watching guys, and good luck fishing.